None of the cereals are advertised on TV. It's time to raise your spoon in morning for the top 10 cereals that don't exist anymore. You're eating a bowl of cereal? C-3PO's. I am C-3PO human cyborg relations. Sometimes the name of the cereal alone is so perfect that it doesn't matter whether it's flakes, puffs, or random shapes that pour out of the box and into your bowl, you gotta have it. Named after the stuffy, perpetually worried gold robot from the Star Wars movies, of course kids from the 80s wanted it every morning. C-3PO is on the front of the box, looking terrified that you might consider eating him, and on the back there were cardboard face cutouts of famous Star Wars characters. There were also giveaways and promotions, where if you send enough box tops to Kellogg's, they would send you Star Wars action figures in the mail. Essentially, this cereal was part of the Star Wars merchandising world, and kids bought it in droves. Sell it to us, we'll give you so much more money! Anthony Daniels, the actor who played C-3PO in the movies, even reprised his role for the television commercials. It was discontinued in 1986, so finding a box now is for collectors only. Only. Oh, and the cereal itself? It was a medley of honey-coated oats, wheat, and corn. Depending on who you asked, it was shaped like the letter B or the number 8, which happens to sound like the name of the next memorable robot in the Star Wars franchise. Did this 80s cereal predict the arrival of BB-8 in 2015's The Force Awakens? The power of breakfast marketing is strong with this cereal. Hidden treasures. Treasures? Gifts? You got it all wrong! The older you get, the fewer surprises you want in the morning. But kids love surprises all the time, so between 1993 and 1995, General Mills sold a cereal called Hidden Treasures. They were corn-based squares that had a fruity filling, but different flavors inside, like cherry, grape, or orange, and it was hard to tell which flavor each one was before popping them in your mouth. As a bonus, to help teach children that crushing disappointment is a part of life. Some squares were completely hollow and had no additional flavor at all. I have um, original no flavor and whole wheat no flavor. A robot named HT was the mascot. Don't think too hard about how they came up with the name. But the lore was a bit hazy. Apparently, he was the inventor of the cereal, as well as the mischievous character who wanted to find out what was in each square, even though kids told him not to ruin their fun. Since Forrest Gump hit theaters in 1994, maybe he could have said, Life is like a bowl of hidden treasures. You never know what you're gonna get. Nickelodeon Green Slime Bart was buying slime. Most of the products on this list were attempts to rule the cereal aisle in the grocery store for as long as possible. But this one was always meant to be a limited edition, get it while you can, breakfast treat in 2003. By the early 2000s, thanks to shows like Rugrats and SpongeBob SquarePants, Nickelodeon was the premier kids' channel, overshadowing the once indomitable Disney. Getting covered in green slime at their awards shows was a badge of honor for kids and celebrities celebrities alike. It's an honor. Thankfully, when it came to making a cereal to celebrate the award show, General Mills kept it familiar, using puffed corn cereal and then added green food coloring. While the flavor itself wasn't mind-blowing, a nice touch was that each shape was slightly unique and lumpy, meant to represent a blob of slime. Because it was known as a limited edition cereal right from the start, collectors eagerly snapped up the products and didn't even open the boxes. If you want to try them today, you're going to have to fork over a lot of green to get a bit of the green cereal. Pac-Man Cereal Hey, you know Pac-Man? I know of him. The Pac-Man video game was all the rage in the early 80s, and since it involved a large yellow mouth gobbling up multicolored ghosts, creating a cereal where kids could do the exact same thing in their cereal bowls was a no-brainer. Now, General Mills could have made this product with sugar-free wheat squares, and kids would still have bought it, but they did deliver the sugar rush, because both Pac-Man and the ghosts, Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde, were all marshmallow bits. There were also corn pops mixed in that were meant to represent all the dots Pac-Man would have to eat to advance to the next level. It was probably the most 
most thematically consistent cereal of all time. At least he's consistent. But because of its obvious similarities to Lucky Charms, also made by General Mills, Pac-Man cereal would only be popular as long as the game was. So it's no surprise that efforts to keep the product in the hearts and minds of kids meant adding Miss Pac-Man and including giveaways and raffles for all sorts of merchandise. General Mills went hard on this, too. There were hats, watches, cameras, and a chance to win a full-sized Pac-Man arcade cabinet. It's actually impressive that it wasn't discontinued until 1988, since by then, in the video game world, the big yellow mouth had been replaced by a jumping Italian plumber as the new favorite. Waffleos. Where's my waffles? They're coming right up. Why work hard trying to come up with new ideas for breakfast cereal flavors, ingredients, or shapes when you can just rip off something else that's just sitting on the kitchen table? Waffleos arrived in the late 1970s and only got a couple of years out of the decade before being yanked. However, during that time, it was the best way to get a maple syrup waffle flavor that you could drown in milk. The selling point was that it would stay crispy in milk, meaning they were pretty brittle at first and would eventually make the roof of your mouth sore. I can't breathe! <laughs> The advertising was in the hands of a dim-witted animated cowboy named Waffalo Bill and his smarter-than-average horse. The western theme was really played up, and you could send away for a cowboy-themed belt buckle. While the maple syrup was meant to be a sugary plus, a lot of kids realized that if they wanted waffles, the real deal would be the better choice. As a last-ditch attempt to keep it on shelves, a blueberry-flavored incarnation was introduced, but also didn't make much of a dent, so Waffalo Bill had to ride his know-it-all steed into the sunset. Cap'n Crunch Choco Donuts Cap'n? Like Cap'n Crunch? Breakfast cereals and sugar go together like butter and toast, or bacon and eggs. Cereals in the early 20th century were quite light on sugars, as cornflakes and shredded wheat were the standards. As food manufacturing became more industrialized, we got a lot more easy access to processed sugars. And by the early 21st century, kids and adults who ate like kids were blessed with an offshoot of the already sugary Cap'n Crunch cereal, Choco Donuts. Not just donuts, but chocolate-flavored donuts. New flavor, triple chocolate. Chocolate. And just to really drive the sweet, sweet point home, they added multicolored sprinkles as well. How do donuts work floating in milk, you ask? Wouldn't they immediately get soggy? To get around this, the donuts in the cereal were crunchy and became softer the longer they soaked. So it comes down to what kind of cereal connoisseur you were as to when you should start spooning this sugary start to the day into your mouth. Whether it was too much of a good thing or a sugar overdose that made everyone grind their teeth for the rest of the day, Choco Donuts stopped appearing on shelves in the early 2000s. Nerd Cereal Look, these are nerds. Yes, we do mean the candy. And yes, like the candy, the cereal boxes were designed to have two different flavors and two different compartments so you could access each flavor separately. And yes, there were arguments and fights over whether you preferred the orange or cherry flavor or mixed them together like a heathen. Being able to do this to nerd cereal like you were able to with the candy is a novelty that immediately earns it a spot on this list. But it should be noted that the cereal was not just a big box of candy. While sugar has been a dominant ingredient on this list, Nerds the cereal was a mix of wheat, corn, rice, and oat flour before the sweet stuff was slathered on as a sort of hard shell. So much sweetness! The big send-away offer was a specially designed cereal bowl that had a divider in the middle so that you could pour each flavor of Nerd in each half. There was even a small gate that you could lift to eventually have the two flavors mingle with each other. That is, if you were okay with such a thing. While there was a rumor that this cereal would make your <clears throat> uh, bathroom experience turn to whatever color you recently ate, the real problem was the challenge of making specialized boxes and bags to hold two different cereals. So the cereal was phased out in the late 1980s. 
Monopoly cereal. We could play Monopoly. Nothing makes kids more excited about breakfast than acquiring real estate. Uh, right? While the famous board game was a big hit right away when it came out in the mid-1930s, it took nearly seven decades until there was an attempt to make it something that could be poured into a bowl and consumed. Celebrating Rich Uncle Pennybags, the actual name of the white mustachioed mascot, made sense for a game about market domination and bank errors in your favor. But it was an odd choice for cereal marketed to eight-year-olds. And the excessive amount amounts of marshmallow bits shaped like hotels and deeds scared off the adults who might be watching their weight as closely as their bank account. I don't want people to think I'm fat. More exciting was some of the whispering behind the scenes. Just like how Monopoly was strongly based on another similar board game called The Landlord's Game, Monopoly the Cereal was rumored to simply be Cinnamon Toast Crunch with the marshmallows added in. It debuted in 2000. 2003, at a time when the brand was trying to switch gears after the McDonald's Monopoly scandal. While it was intended to be a limited edition cereal, it's common knowledge that if anything sells extremely well, the company would bring it back again and again. And since Monopoly cereal is gone from store shelves, it seems like the board game alone will have to carry on its legacy. Mr. T Cereal Mr. T hmm? It makes sense that cereals marketed to kids would have zany cartoon characters plastered on the box to make them more appealing. So it's doubly strange to have a living, breathing person on the front who seems to have leapt out of a cartoon himself. The menacing, gold chain wearing, vest rocking Mr. T was a household name throughout the 80s. Having come to prominence playing the villain in one of the Rocky movies and a military commando slash demolition expert on the A Team television show, he was a big hit with children. This led to an animated TV series on Saturday morning named after him, so it was obvious that merchandising would come next. Merch, baby! Merch! In case his cartoon face on the box wasn't enough, there was a lot of sugar placed on the crispy corn and oats cereal, giving it a taste similar to Cap'n Crunch. At least Quaker Oats put the added effort in to make the cereal pieces shaped like the letter T. While Mr. T made plenty of cameo appearances on many TV shows to keep his popularity going throughout the 80s, his cereal alone made an appearance in the kids' film Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Even as his own star began to dim when the next decade began, his cereal was still on shelves until 1993. And yes, of course, the catchphrase was, I pity the fool who don't eat my cereal. Sprinkle Spangles All right, sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. You don't even need to say the name of the brand to know which cereals they're associated with. But when thinking about the successes, you rarely think of the failures. So pour a cereal bowl full of Sprinkle Spangles, which were star-shaped corn puffs decorated with sprinkles, out for the genie, the mascot that General Mills tried really, really hard to put on the same level of those other breakfast icons. They got noted character actor Dom DeLuise to voice the character in the commercials, and on the side of the box was a five-stanza poem extolling his own powers and the cereal he created. It is my divine power. You wish it, I dish it, was his catchphrase. And it went absolutely nowhere. The fact that this cereal came out in 1993 suggests it was trying to piggyback on the success of Disney's Aladdin film from a year earlier, since this genie looks a lot like the iconic Robin Williams character. But mascots can't sell cereal alone, and while kids and sprinkles seem to be a perfect pair, parents thought it was a terrible choice and Sprinkle Spangles was gone by 1998. Sadly, the genie was retired even before the cereal was. 